Hi, I'm Chris Howey. We've spoken a lot about digital connectivity, but today we're going to showcase how we can actually put that into play. What we've set up here is a generic wine tank application. On the left hand side, we've gone for traditional uh, wiring, so an RTD, a brine valve, and of course a, uh, a butterfly valve which could be used for pump in, pump out, uh, etc. Um, on this valve we've also got feedbacks for pump safety and the like. We're going to wire this directly to a control panel and uh, showcase the traditional way that most uh, wineries would be automated right now. On the other side, we've got the digital connectivity version where we've got the same devices identical to this side. However, we've gone with digital sensors and digitally communicating valves. And we're going to wire those directly to the control block on the top. So what we're going to showcase is the difference between the two systems and we're going to have a bit of a timed trial to see which way is faster and which way is uh, better to communicate. It's not entirely fair because in a control panel situation we'll be wiring just to the panel at the tank whereas in a real situation there may be one panel per 16 tanks so the, this panel could be up to 40 meters away from the actual things that we're wiring. So every cable that we put in on this side could actually be up to 40 meters longer with cable trays, ties, etc. So, but in this instance we'll just wire it directly to the tank here. Both sides we're assuming we've got power and comms connected. So I've got a couple of helpers uh, from our team who are going to have taken on the challenge to uh, compete in this uh, uh, showcase. So I'd like to welcome them now, and in true MasterChef style, I would like to say your time starts now. So on the left side, we've got uh, Nelson. Say hi. Hey, Chris. So um, just to, to give us a bit of an idea, what are you going to, uh, how are you going to go about this? Yeah, so what I'll be doing first is obviously running the air tubes um, from the valves to the control panel. I'll then rough in my cabling, so that will mean uh, cabling to the uh, RTD and the control valve back to the control panel. Once all my cables are roughed in, I'll then terminate in the field and uh, finish off by terminating in the panel and um, see how we go. And how long do you think that's going to take? Probably about half an hour, just given the type of job it is and the, what I've done before. Okay, so on the uh, digital side we have uh, Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, can you uh, just give us a um, bit of an overview as to what you're going to do? Alrighty, so first up we're going to connect our pneumatics for our valve heads. So the nice thing with these heads is that we're using pilot valves, so we don't have to run individual airlines to each valve. We can just loop between each of the control heads. Uh, after we have our airlines in, we're going to be running our digital connectivity cables from each of our devices on the tank back to our field gateway module here. Once we've got that all set up, we're then going to generate a file so that the PLC can interface with all of our devices. With that, we have our uh, field connections all finished. So we're now going to go set up our PLC file and get it ready for the PLC. Okay, and with that, we're all finished and ready to go. All finished already. All finished. Okay. Already. Well, let's let's uh, maybe put it to the test. Okay, can you let's auto tune this valve? Yep. Alrighty. So if we jump into our butterfly valve there and we run our teach function. Cool. Yeah, we okay, can valves see operating. The valve starts teaching. So the teach function is setting up all of the uh, end positions and the feedbacks, etc. That's correct. So it's teaching that head whereabouts the bottom and top of that valve. Can you tell me what the temperature is? 
Yep, no worries. So we're just waiting for the final teach for this one. And now that that's finished, we can see that our temperature is 23.4 degrees. So 23.4 degrees on the uh, temperature. So we've actually successfully commissioned everything. Yes. Um, one of the beauties about uh, digital technology is that we don't just get feedbacks and things like that, but we actually get more diagnostic data, etc. Can you actually tell me how many cycles this valve has done in its entire life? Yep, no worries. So that's easy as well with these digitally connected valves. So jumping into our diagnostics for the valve head, we can actually see that the valve has done a total of 1,845 cycles. So 1,845 cycles. So we can actually set set points on that so they can actually tell you when a valve needs servicing or replacement, etc. That's right. Um, can you tell me the ID number of this control top and when it was manufactured? All right, so jumping into this device, we can actually see all of the, uh, the maintenance data for it. And the ID number for this one is 307376, and it was manufactured on the 11th of June, 2019. There you go. So this sort of data is just a standard when you have digital connectivity. Of course, you get none of that when you have an alternate uh, wired system. Well, you're all clear then. Awesome. Let's yeah. see how Nelson's going. <laughs> You're done. Done, Chris. It's about time. <laughs> so uh, you're, what, you're at what stage now? So what I've done is basically um, terminations at the board, um, ready to do my point-to-point -point testing. So we've not done any configuration whatnot just yet. That's all for the PLC team. Um, but yeah, we basically need to now check our wiring. Uh, it's probably going to go through a few tests, um, check for any issues with wiring, and then we can um, start worrying about the configuration. Okay, so where um, Nicholas got up to is a, a lot more advanced as to where you are right now because you've still got to do your point checks and, yeah. and, and generate that file for the PLC to communicate. Yeah. Now, about how long would that take you uh, to catch up? Probably about 10, 15 minutes just based on what we have here, roughly. So. Okay, so another 10 or 15 minutes. But I think we'll, yeah. um, we'll, uh, we'll call it there. So there you have it. You can see there's a big difference between uh, what the guys did and what time they had and, uh, and where they're up to. As Nelson said, he's got another 15 minutes or so to go to get to the same stage uh, Nicholas was already at. Projects don't always run smoothly. A lot of the time the process engineer will come in with a new idea when it's already done and wired and whatever. I've done just the same today. So I've got a furphy I'm gonna throw to each of the guys here. Um, yeah, let's just imagine in this case, the, uh, yeah, the winemaker turned around and said, oh, I'm going to do some tank blanketing now. So I want you to install a solenoid valve at each of the uh, uh, tanks. So in other words, uh, I'm asking the guys to incorporate a digital output now on the run pretty well. Uh, let's see how easy it is to do it in the two different methods. digital plug is ready to go. Okay. Okay, well let's, uh, let's see, can you operate it? Alrighty, so jumping into the plug, we can turn it on. It's flashing, so you connect it. Okay, click. 
and off. And off it goes. There we go. Well done. Okay, Nelson, uh, where are you up to? Just about, uh, yeah, in the middle of wiring up a DIN plug at the moment. I haven't roughed my cable, not alone, near okay. terminating. I would uh, call it there, I'd say. Okay, so I think we've given a, uh, a great uh, showcase today of the differences between uh, the traditional versus the digital connectivity. And uh, our example today has shown that we're in 15 to 20 times faster to do the field work and also uh, prepare for the PLC communication by doing it digitally. So I hope that uh, this gives you a, a great idea to, as to why and how this um, can save you a lot of money. This was just one tank. In a real winery, there may be up to 200 tanks. So it's going to be a big difference in the, uh, the costs of a project. Thank you for your time.